If you're a tinkerer like me, the longer you run Home Assistant, the more likely it is that things are going to get orphaned, entities are going to get lost, or things are just going to get unused, missing, or unavailable. Well, there's a tool to help you figure this all out. It's called Watchman. Watchman helps you identify those entities and helps prevent things from stopping working without you knowing about them. And today we're going to install that tool and go through a little bit of it. And I'll show you what it's found in my instance of Home Assistant, which is quite a lot, actually. Uh, so stay tuned and let's get started. So Watchman is here on GitHub, written by Dummy Labs. And like I said in the intro, it's an attempt to control unwelcome changes that make you able to and make you able to react proactively before some critical automation gets broken or something else happens. It can also help you clean up your entities. This is not a replacement for, uh, for the repair center. It's something that you can use in addition to repair center. This was brought about well before repair center was available and it's still useful in a lot of cases. All right, so this is installed pretty much like any other HACS integration. I'll go to the integration section and install it and then put the uh, actual integration in Home Assistant. So let's go through that. So we'll just go over here to HACS. Click on integrations. We're gonna explore and download over here on this button right here. And we're gonna look for the uh, Watchman. Click on it. And then of course it takes you to that same GitHub page um, and all the examples and configurations you can do with it. We're gonna click on download. Obviously we want the regular version. You can go to beta versions if you want, if they are available, but we will just go with our stable version. Click on download. Okay, and if we go back to HACS now, you'll see that you'll need to do a restart of Home Assistant. Anytime you do an integration through HACS, a restart is required. So I will just click on the C key, click on developer tools, come over here, check my configuration, and then click on restart. It asks me to confirm and then I'll re restart and we'll be back in just a minute after the restart is completed. All right, so the restart is almost finished here. It's coming in the little notice here that it's starting up all the other services and whenever thing, everything is done, then it will be done as well. And now Home Assistant has started. So let's go over here now to developer or to settings integrations. And we're gonna add the Watchman integration that ties the HACS add-on into Home Assistant itself. So we're gonna click over here on the add integration button and we will search for Watchman. Click on that and it will ask you, well, it's quick. It, it asks you where you wanna put it, if anywhere, click on finish. Okay, so it's now completely installed, but there's other things to consider as we go along here. So let's go back over to the GitHub page and take a look. And I wanna talk a little bit more about what it does first. It's a custom integration uh, for Home Assistant through HACS. It collects all the Home Assistant entities, sensors, timers, input selects, all of that stuff mentioned, mentioned in your YAML configuration files, as well as all the services. With this list of entities, it checks their actual state one by one and reports those that are not available or missing. And then for services, it checks whether services is available in the HA service registry. Uh, and this report can be re, uh, stored as a text table or can be sent via notification service of choice. And then um, it gives you an example of the report we'll look at in a minute. It knows nothing about complex relationships and dependencies among YAML configuration files as well as nothing about the semantics of entities and automation. All it's doing is parsing the YAML files line by line. It tries to guess references either to an entity or to a service. And that's based on regular expression heuristics. That means that the integration can give both false positives and false negatives. To ignore them, you can put in ignore or false positives. You can ignore them in the ignored items parameter. Uh, and improvements for false negatives are something they're working on for future releases. Now, as of the time of this video filming, the integration hasn't had any updates in a couple of months, so it doesn't mean it doesn't work well. I just don't know what the, the author or developer's plan is for continuing the integration. There are a number of integration settings that you can set here. Uh, 
and they're all listed on the GitHub page. If we go over here to the integrations page and we click on configure, we then get all of the information that we need to configure if we want to. A lot of this is optional. I am not going to use a notification service. You can use something like Telegram uh, to send it out, but I don't think that's necessary. In my case, you can if you want to, um, but I'm not gonna do it. You can use the, or here's the included folders that it's gonna scan, typically the config folder for Home Assistant configuration. The header for the report, you can change this to whatever you want. And then the where the report is actually gonna go, it's gonna store it in your configuration directory in Home Assistant, which you can access from the file editor in uh, your Home Assistant instance. I'll show you that in a minute. You can ignore entities and services, and I will demonstrate that in a minute as well. Ignore entity states, uh, chunk size and bytes to use with notification services if you need to make the make it into to, to more uh, chunks, you can do that by changing the size. You can ignore files, although I didn't have a lot of luck getting it to ignore specific files. So uh, you might be able to do that. And then the report columns, you can change the width of the report columns. And I'll show you that here in a minute as well. You can start a delay uh, on Watchmen for so many seconds for everything to get initialized before it starts doing anything. And you can add friendly names report and parse dashboards configurations. Okay, so I'm gonna leave everything the same as the default configuration for now. And the way you run this, I guess I gotta submit it. The way you run this um, is to go into developer tools or one of the ways, you can run this via automation or whatever else, uh, but you can go into developer tools under services and call a watchman report. I already had it selected, so you can search for watchman report. And none of this matters. You wanna create the file report. You could send a notification if you had that set up. Um, and then you would set all these other options in the service call itself. So I will just call the service right now. And once you do that, depending on how much stuff you have it looking through or how much stuff it has to look through, the, it will generate a report. And typically for me, that's been within minutes or less. So to view the report the way I've got it now in the file, is to come over here to the file editor. And I'm gonna go down to the watch and report and already I've pulled this up before. So you can just click on this file list here and come down here to the bottom of the, the list and click on watchman report. And this is what you're gonna get. And the watch and report shows that I have three missing services from the nine found in my config and I have missing three entities from the seven found in my config. Now, a couple things I'll just point out as niceties here, uh, and it's a little difficult to display on the video because I've made it a little bit bigger for you all to see, but you can see here that the columns have wraparounds on them. You know, I might be a little OCD or whatever, but I don't like the wraparounds. So one way to fix that is to go back over to your integrations and come down here, now everything's huge. Come down here to Watchmen, configure it. And I wanna change these width, column width. So I'm gonna make this one 50. And I'm gonna make this one 80. I'm gonna save that at the bottom, finish it. And then I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna run the uh, report again. So developer tools, run the report or call the service. And then I'll go over here to the file editor and I'll pull that back up and it's probably already there for me. Yep. And let me uh, reduce the size of the screen. Let me go ahead and delete this file first and then run it again so it's not in there and it'll give us the new, uh, the new column width. So I deleted the report. I'm gonna go back over here to settings, integrations. Actually, I'm gonna go over here to developer tools and I'm going to call that report again, call the service, go over here to the file editor. And you can see now what has happened. It has increased the file or the column width to 70 here, 70 here, and then made this, uh, or this is 50 and this is 70, whatever I set it to, it made it wider. So now it doesn't line wrap. 
Now this one still does, and this is just because it's a really long uh, file name. So we'll just leave that one alone for now. But it makes it easier to read when I do that. It's just an OCD thing. You can leave it alone if you want to or not. Besides the report itself, there's a few new sensors that are added to Home Assistant. So if we go into developer tools here and we look at states, we can look at a Watchmen states. So right now we have Watchmen last updated. You can see the Watchmen missing entities. That's all of them that are here. So the state shows three for the number and then the attributes show all of the actual entities that are missing. Same thing for services. The state shows how many there are. So that's this sensor right here. And then uh, an exact listing of it in the attributes. There are a couple things you can do with Markdown and I'm gonna do that now. You can create a Loveless Markdown card and put these things in the Markdown card if you wanted to, to view them on a dashboard. So if we go into just an overview dashboard and I just go in and create a new dash, I'll leave everything else as default for now. I'm gonna add a card here. It's gonna be the masonry card or the, uh, the uh, markdown card. And I'm gonna take this, this uh, text from over here, starting here, I already have type markdown content, don't need that here. So I'm just gonna take this part right here and I'm not gonna do card mod. You can do card mod if you have card mod installed. That's a separate HACS installation. And you can do some stuff to uh, with CSS and make it look pretty and stuff like that. For today's video, we're just gonna put in the basic markdown so that we can see what it does. Get rid of all that. And then we will save this right here. And now we have the watch and report with three missing entities and it tells you what they are. If you hover over these, it tells you where they are in the file itself or in the in the directory. So this one's under custom components, alarmo services yaml dot or services dot yaml um, line nine, column 59, I think that's what that is. And you can do the same thing down here with the services. You just copy this right here and we'll create a new markdown card. So edit the dashboard, add a card, another markdown card, and we will put it in there. Now you notice nothing happened over here and I will explain why that is. Let me bring up my Home Assistant Yellow on a different window here, a different tab. We will go into Developer Tools, States, and if we look at Watchmen again, you'll notice here in the markdown that in this line right here, this is called sensor.watchman missing services and here, the area it's talking about is called services. If you look in developer tools under services, rather than calling this section right here services, they've called it entities in the attribute. So it's looking for the attributes under the services. Well, there aren't any under this sensor right here. There are entities under this sensor. So that's just a typo on the GitHub page, which I need to notify them about. But all you have to do then is change this from services to entities. And if it's right, you'll get your services here. Otherwise you would get no services listed there. Took me a little bit of time to figure that out, but I got it right. So missing entities three, missing services three. Okay, so that's really, it's a really simple thing to use, but it's very helpful. I need to go in here and figure out why these are unavailable and missing, and then figure out why these services are not called or missing or whatever here. So I need to fix that stuff. It's just stuff that needs to be fixed and things that have happened over time. Now this is my test version, my yellow, which is my, my second second Home Assistant instance. I have two of them. The, pro, the production one is this one right here. I've got everything already built here, already installed. I just am going to add the markdown card so you can see what exactly is messed up here. And I'm gonna start with the one I already had in the buffer. So we'll just do the services first and again, change this to entities. Okay, we'll save that one. And we've got five missing services and I'm gonna add another card for the, for the entities that are missing. So let's do that. Go back up here and copy all of this section right here. Put that in the markdown card. Save it. And now you will see that I have 522 missing entities. Now we talked about filtering different types of things on here. 
So let's go back up to this section here where we talk about our filtering. So we can do, I'm gonna start with ignored uh, entity state. So we have missing, unavailable, and unknown. So right now we have all of these missing. So if I search for the word missing here, over on the right, this is all the, the places it's found the word missing in my output here. There's a lot. So there's 522. So if I go into developer tools, or actually I wanna to go to settings integrations. If I go to integrations and I'm, I work on the watchdog integration here and I change it to ignore entity states missing. Come down and submit it here. Now, if I go back over here and I refresh this page, it takes every time you do this on a system with a lot of stuff, it takes a moment for watchdog to go through everything. So everything's gonna be slow for the first, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, and then it brings everything back up. So just keep that in mind when you're making these changes that you've gotta give a watchdog a time, or watchman a time to run through everything one more time. Okay, so everything is back and we've dropped down to, and see it's even filtered out services. We have zero services. It went from 522 to 131 uh, services here that are that have an issue, right? So now all of these are either unavailable or unknown. And if we wanted to filter on, let's see what else we can filter on here. If we wanted to filter on ignored entities and services, we could go in here and find some entities that we wanna get rid of. So let's find anything with button. So we have some buttons here. So I will just filter all of the button domain on this. So we, we go to this section here, button.star, just to make sure that's right. We'll go over here to our examples and we want to ignore all entities. So everything with the sensor domain. So in this case, button domain. So button dot asterisk. And in my settings, I've got button dot asterisk, asterisk, submit that. Give it a couple of minutes. And then we'll be able to refresh this page. And we should see this number drop down from 131 to whatever's left over for the buttons. All right, so we're down to 104 from the 121 we had a minute ago. So we got rid of everything that says buttons. Uh, so I'm hiding things that I need to fix. I'm just showing you the, the ability to filter stuff. And you could even um, filter a like a, a device here. Like, so this is Synology, right? So we'll do one more filtering on here. And we'll filter on the entity. So in this case, I'm gonna say Synology. So asterisk, Synology, asterisk, and save that does a little bit of regex work and then that allows you to specify, you know, some regex or some some wild cards, not really regex, but wild card stuff to filter on. So we go over here now and we look and we see how many are pulled out. So we're currently at 104. So with this Synology being filtered out, that takes a pretty big chunk out of a lot of Synology devices or things that are messed up. So I'm down to 87. So why in the world do I have so much of this stuff? Well, it just happens to be that over time, the, the entities or the sensors or the integrations, whatever, have been updated. And I didn't do a good job of keeping up with that. So I'm up to 500 and something, whatever it was, entities that need to be dealt with. With running Watchmen on a regular basis and getting a report or having a card like this markdown card that I showed you, having that on your Home Assistant dashboard will tell you, hey, I've got some stuff I need to fix right away rather than waiting for, I don't know how many years it's been, to let that list build up to the point where, okay, now I have a huge mess to clean up. So there you go, um, 522 entities I've got to fix on my production. That is Watchmen, that is how it works. Um, it is a neat tool to be able to keep up with this stuff. Remember, it can do false positives also. Some, some of that may be a false positive and it can miss some things as false negatives. Uh, like I said at the beginning, it doesn't replace Repair Center. I think it augments it. Repair Center is a different type of thing. And as Repair Center becomes more mature, maybe Watchmen won't be as necessary. But for now, I'm going to use Watchmen in addition to Repair Center to make sure my Home Assistant instances are up to where they need to be and everything is running smoothly with no surprises. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. You can talk to me on Discord. And if you're not a subscriber or a channel member, you can do both of those right here on the channel and that helps support me and helps the algorithm point my videos out to other people that might want to watch them. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.